have a look at how to create a custom object, an object that we've made from scratch in this case. So we wanted to make this pot and so in order to create this pot we first made it into a two-dimensional section which we use the morph tool to revolve into a three-dimensional shape or a three-dimensional morph and now what we want to do is turn it into a object. I can do this in a few different ways but it's and it's quite simple. I've already rotated this so it's in the right orientation so I'm going to go to my file libraries and objects save selection as what is it? Is it an object? Is it a door? Is it a window? or any one of these things. It's a object. Just a standard object. Thanks. Where do I want to save it? To my embedded library? No, I never want to save anything to my embedded library. This means it puts it in my current file but it makes it very hard to access in other places. Embedded library is a interesting idea but it's a terrible problem. It means that our file sizes get larger. It means that if we duplicate a name it gets corrupted and it's really horrible I would recommend that you never use the embedded library. Instead, we're going to say file in a selected folder. What this means is we have to get very good at managing folders outside of our Archicad file, but of course that's a very good habit to get into anyway, and it makes saving and backing up and archiving much, much better. Browse. We want to go to Archicad. MD objects, and we're going to call this rain chain um, pot. Saving as a GSM or an Archicad object file. It's giving me parameters and this I can use these to uh, to choose what the parameters are and of course I can change them as well. I don't want lots of different pen colors so I'm just going to make all of these one of course, I can change them, but this is a fairly simple object. If it was more complex, I'd want more parameters. And OK. Now, the object settings have got a lot better in the recent versions of Archicad. It used to be much trickier or much dumber, if you like. It's more um, parametric now. Now, I need to find where that object is. So I'm going to go Object. Uh, let's do it this way first. File, Libraries and Objects, Library Manager. And I'm going to update and reload or refresh and reload my libraries, my current libraries. And the reason that I'm doing that is because I've already, theoretically, I'll make sure that I do, I already have a folder called RMD Objects. So let's just make sure it's there. Sorry, let's go Objects. The objects. Did I have my new folder in here or was it somewhere else? It might not be. Alright, let's just make sure I import it from the right place. File library and objects. Let's add a folder. Let's do it the long way so you can see me doing it anyway. Archicad RMD new objects and I'm going to choose that entire folder which means if I put more things in that folder they'll all appear Alright, back into the object library. I'll close down the basic Archicad library. And now we see that there's the basic one, and these are all ones that I've made up, and I always use caps just to make them a bit more obvious. So here we see rain chain pot. Often when we import a library part, at least this is how it's set up on mine, it won't have the use object surface ticked. Of course, if we had different objects, it would show the different surfaces. I've only got one anyway, so it's only showing those. And the best thing about this, maybe, is that it gives us the ability to change the size. And so my pot was 544 by 380, but I can now change that to be whatever I want. Of course, it wouldn't change the thickness because I haven't given it parameters to stretch. It would just change the whole thing relatively. Now, I don't want that to be 2,000 above the ground. I want that to be flat on the ground. Thank you. Let's place that here. We'll see that the difference between a 
morph and an object is that it changes the way that it imports. So we've now got five nodes, outside nodes and a center point. Let's have a look at the two of these side by side in 3D. And you can't see much difference. It's pretty much identical. But this means we can now take this in and out of projects and import it in any way that we want to. Let's put this in an application, in an application to see how it might work. I'm going to place it here on my plan. I'm going to choose a better scale. What am I doing? Furniture. Let's call you a fixture. Let's go to the upper ground floor plan. I want to have a look at what my roof's doing. So I'm going to have a look at, show that as trace reference. All right. And I've got an awning roof that looks like it finishes over here. So I'm going to put my I'm going to put my pot behind the door, maybe just here. And I've got an object called chain, so let's go and find that chain. I'm just quickly making this up. Thank you. Let's change this to Chrome. The size is probably wrong, but it doesn't matter at the moment. Let's view all this in 3D. Here's my rain chain and my pot. Now, of course, the advantage of this is that I could just copy paste them at all the different instances where I'd have this going on, and in this case, that's the effect that I'm after.